Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, my weekly recap on what's going on in the Arizona real estate market. Not that things change that much in a week, but sometimes the news can and the news headlines. And I want to recap some of the things that I spoke about this week, especially on our live show, my live stream that I do on uh, Thursdays with uh, my lender and my broker at 5 p.m. on Thursdays. Had a few uh, internet connection hiccups. Jessica lost her connection about five minutes into it. And then uh, towards the end of it, Pat started buffering. So, but that's why it's live and that's why it's fun. But let's take a look at a headline here that I saw that made me kind of dive in a little bit. Domino effect, how the Fed's interest rate cut impacts Phoenix home prices. So you go down and you read and it doesn't say much, except it says that the Federal Reserve cutting the benchmark Fed funds rate by half a percentage point Arizona's resident residential real estate brokers are seeing renewed home buyer activity. And I'm going to go back to that in a moment. Let me talk about what that really says. There's a couple messages in there I think that are wrong. And one is the Fed's action on the 18th did nothing to mortgage rates this week. Nothing. In fact, they went up from 6.1 almost to 6.2. So having an article that said that the Fed's actions on the 18th has changed the real estate market is just disingenuous. It, it didn't change anything. Um, but the article states here that um, right after the Fed rate cut, Greg Haig, CEO of good old 72 sold, said he saw an immediate surge of buyer inquiries. Now, let's not confuse that with an immediate surge of buying activity, meaning people actually bought homes. What they're saying, and they say it with two other agents in here when they're going, you know, I got this surge in buyer activity. They, they just got more inquiries. Hey, we had the rate cut on the 18th. What happened? What happened to mortgage rates? Because that's been teed up for so long. Wait till the September rate cut you'll see rates improve, mortgage rates improve, that the phone calls and emails increased because people were following the headlines instead of actually looking what was going on. And I, I don't blame it. People don't have a lot of resources. So along comes this article giving you the impression that buyer activity has really jumped up. Buyer inquiries has jumped up. There's a lot of buyers out there waiting, probably a record number of buyers that are waiting to buy. Because why? Well, because right now they can't. They're priced out. Uh, so they want to see just how low interest rates have gone. They're asking questions about, you know, where do you think this is headed? Um, I had a question on the live stream on Friday. Rick, when do you think on Thursday, when do you think we'll hit 20,000 listings? And I said, next week. We're at 19.5. That wasn't a hard prediction to make. And we're running short of contracts by about 500 a week versus what's coming on. It's not a huge number. Here's the number that really counts. Sales month to date. So this is current right now. So you can see that we're at 2,798 versus last year at 3,034. So sales activity has not increased at all. Um, it might, but here's what active listings are doing. They are going up. I remove 2020 and 2021. You can see that this is in fact seasonal. You get out of Labor Day and people start putting their homes on the market. They want to get it sold before Christmas. So that's pretty common. Here's uh, something to take note of, and that is that our months of supply is now at 3.1. It's long been said that normal is four to six months. I think if we ever saw a six months supply in here in Phoenix, we'd, we'd go crazy. We're already getting comments that say, I can't believe how many listings there are in my neighborhood. Well, you know, Two years ago, you didn't have any, so now you got two. It's like, oh, there's this massive explosion. But let's take a look at this map. This one is, uh, this one's kind of fun to play with. And this is, you look at the darker colors, that means it's either hot, hotter, or frenzied. And then the beige, the kind of the bluish and greenish, means it's cold. Uh, these grayed out numbers are unbelievable and what the frick I don't see any of those so I went back to April of this year now watch I can just go forward watch the colors change from the darker colors to the lighter colors this means it this is measuring uh, listing success you know are they are they selling so if you watch this 
and I go a week at a time. Um, there's May, there's May 11th, May 18th, May 25th. So the browns, the darker colors, starting to disappear, aren't they? Dramatically. Um, especially if we get into summer. Now, we're going to scroll right up here to, I'm going to go to September. i got to pull this thing all the way down here to where we are today. And what's it going to show me? It's going to show me that it doesn't want to play nice. So we're going to just click here till I get to September. Apologize for that. But my point is, just look at all the hot, frenzied markets that are disappearing. And I wish, okay, we're almost there. We're August 10th. Bear with me, folks. And uh, this is not rehearsed. Um, there's September 7th. There is hardly anything out there that you would call brisk, frenzy, or hotter. In fact, I guess that's what normal looks like, right? When you get that kind of a market. We're definitely at a, at a normal market. Now, there's some other interesting stuff going on. A couple headlines out there that I found this week. And this one's interesting, but I think it's kind of a big nothing burger, to be honest with you. It says that Zillow, Redfin are launching a partnership on listings for new homes. So basically, new home construction is going to syndicate their listings to Redfin and to Zillow. Syndication is just a technical term that says their data that's already in the MLS, they're going to go ahead and authorize it to be shown on Zillow and Redfin, just like we do with all of our listings. So you're going to be able to see it on the number one search site <coughs> for real estate, no matter how much we send people to our websites and uh, to our portals on the MLS, people always go to Zillow. So they're going to go to Zillow and look for new construction. But guess what? That's already available now. In fact, I put the link in down below. You can search by map in our area here and criteria off to the left and look and see what's available for new construction. So it's already out there. They're just saying they're going to syndicate it so you can see it on the site that you like to go to. But check it out. You know, if you're looking at new construction, the link is in the description below and just kind of dance around that a little bit here's the other interesting article i ran into and that is what is price to sell really worth when you see that in the description price to sell now i haven't been, been able to do a search on that term to see how many there are here but i believe when i was reading this article that in the southwest market about two and a half percent lower than that is price to sell Nationally, the phrase is worth about an 8.5% discount, but not here. Uh, but it doesn't show our market listed here in the 10 metros largest discount on price to sell homes. But in some areas like El Paso, the discount's 11.2%. Little Rock, Arkansas, if they say it's price to sell on average, they're going down about $57,000. So searching for that term, um, when you see it, um, it does have a value attached to it. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, seller motivated is another term that you'll see when you're looking at, at listings. Um, but in a market like this that's balanced, buyers are waiting for sellers to lower the price. Honestly, have your agent just, you know, send you listings that have been out there 60 days and then just offer them that price that's attractive to you. An offer is an open end of invitation to negotiate. So send the offer. I was in an open house once a few years ago in Tempe and this young man came in and he looked at it and uh, he goes, well, I'm going to wait for him to lower the price. Now, this was before the market really took off. I think it was like 2019. He said, well, I'm going to keep watching it, wait to lower the price. And I go, well, why don't you just offer him the price you want now? Because when they lower the price, you're not the only one sitting back waiting for them to lower the price. And when they do, now you have competition. That's how you should be viewing the market now. If you're waiting for it to crash, that's a whole different animal. Um, I don't see anything that's showing me personally that that's about to happen. I do see softening coming. And as that softening is approaching, especially now when people have the jitters because of the election, uh, it's a decent time for buyers to get out there and start, you know, tossing a few offers out there and testing the market and see what happens. You find that house you like, send them the price. Now, some people are going to be insulted by it. 
It's ridiculous. You're offering me 50000 less. Some people may be in a situation where they go, well, you know, we have not a lot of buyer activity and nobody's giving me an offer and I have to move. I got a job relocation. I got to be in Cleveland by January. Um, you know, they might take it. When you get increased buyer, not buyer activity, but buyers actually out looking, then your odds of having your offer be considered seriously diminish. So as we go into the slower part of the season, actually our sales pick up in the fall. This year, I don't see that, that happening because interest rates are starting to come down. And when things are starting, buyers go, it's worth the wait. Talking to Pat about refinancing, refinancing activity has greatly increased over the past two weeks. And he says he's got a whole bunch of loans out there that, that, you know, are getting close to refinancing. He said, but I'm not going to get ahead of the game. I'm not going to jump out and recommend that you refinance now because reading the tea leaves, rates are going to be lower later. Um, I saw the uh, inflation numbers come in today and they're 2.2 versus 2.5. So that target looks like it's getting achieved. Uh, but the jobs numbers are starting to get uh, a little bleak. So that's what's really driving the central bank to make perhaps another rate cut. But if they're also going to be very cautious about how aggressive they're going to be going forward. So are we going to see a 0.50 or a 0.25? The markets, which price ahead right now, are not pricing that we're going to see a 0.50 come in the next next meeting. It, it's not reflected in the mortgage rates and in the bond market. So the bond market is saying, I don't see them getting too aggressive in the next two cuts because they're going to continue to watch the data. Because remember back in the late 70s, they made the mistake of cutting rates too fast and things took off. Inflation came roaring back. Part of their challenge now is everybody's cutting their rates. China is injecting all kinds of money into their market to try and give it a kickstart. That's why the stock market's doing well for them. And that's why the stock market's doing well for us. In fact, if I look at, I'm going to see if I can pull up here, our money supply, which is M2. It's the amount of money that's out there. Somebody asked me the question this morning. They said, where? Where are all these buyers? Nobody can afford it. I go, well, there's still a lot of money out there. There's still a lot of people making money. There are plenty of buyers that are in a position to buy. It's not at a large scale, uh, but there's enough. It's moving the market. Here's our money supply. I'm going to shorten this graph a little bit. And you can see that this is all the money that was inject injected into the system right here after COVID. And then it just continued to grow and grow and grow. And it's, it's still not coming down. So those of you that follow the stock market and, uh, quite frankly, real estate, you know, this needs to come down. This is the amount of money that's in checking accounts, uh, stocks and everything. So as money supply increases, stocks tend to do well. As money supply starts to go down, stocks don't go, do so well. And you can see that money supply dipped here uh, around, let's see, when this happened, uh, in April. It went down, but then since then, it's it's gone up. So that's something to watch. Um, that's where the money is. We're not seeing a tightening there, and that's what the central bank is looking at too. So they're trying to be careful. If they were to get rates down too much lower, it would increase the money supply. You'll have another bout of inflation. So just my opinion in theory. But as we look into the rest of the year, um, I don't see any reason that prices are going to go up headed into Christmas. And I think, again, to remind you, you know, if you see that home you like, pull the trigger. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.